Welcome back to class, everyone. This is Osteokinesthetics from Theory to Practice for the College of Natural Health Sciences, Bermuda. My name is Dr. Delcina Bean Burroughs. This is lecture number two for module four of the Clinical Competency Certification Program. And our lecture today, we will be looking at applied kinesiology. Now, in terms of our lecture two objectives, at the end of today's lecture, students will understand the concept of kinesiology and how it came to be a respected practice, holistic practice, be familiar with the importance of energy flow in our bodies, understand the concept of applied kinesiology, and understand how applied kinesiology can be successfully paired with osteokinesthetic practice. So we begin today's lecture by discussing what is kinesiology. Kinesiology is a physical treatment known as the treatment of movement. Whilst there are many different approaches to this practice, the original kinesiology founder, Dr. George Goodhart, an American chiropractor, added a practice muscle testing technique to his chiropractic sessions thus creating applied kinesiology. The original muscle testing technique that became an integral part of applied kinesiology was developed in the 1930s by a husband and wife team of therapists called Kendall. Kinesiology comes from the Greek for motion. Science calls it the study of mechanics and movement. Muscle testing at the time was described scientifically as a means of testing the motor function of limbs and already used in many types of practice when kinesiology was developed. Generally known as applied kinesiology or AK, it is also when used in other health areas known as health kinesiology or simply kinesiology. Within each definition, there are slight differences. Dr. Goodhart discovered the effectiveness of muscle testing as part of chiropractic practice during a process of exploration, bringing him to a point of awareness that led to apply kinesiology today. With his unique exploration of theory, Dr. Goodhart drew information from many other practices inclusive but not exhaustive of osteopathy, meridian imbalances, chiropractic, and biochemistry. The difference between applied kinesiology and other forms of the treatment is the realignment process. Realignment is the act of cracking the joints. It is not known whether this is of benefit long-term and medical experts are divided. Chiropractic and realignment is regulated in the UK and in the US. In the US, only medical professionals are allowed to practice such as surgeons or doctors. In the UK, chiropractors are regulated by the Chiropractors Act of 1994, which was set up by the General Chiropractic Council. It is illegal to practice as a chiropractor without first registering with the GCC. Applied kinesiology, the realignment area in particular, is in part a controversial subject. The chiropractic approach in the UK is not completely accepted by all areas of medical science at this point in time. Now, it's important to understand that there is no specific route to qualifying as a kinesiologist because of the hugely broad variation in practice. It would therefore be advisable that you as an osteokinesthetic practitioner will use this course to apply kinesiology principles to enhance your already established practice, such as in osteopathy, manual therapy, reflexology, massage therapy, etc. 
with a thorough understanding of applied kinesiology. As a practitioner, you can explore your client's energy flow in order to identify blockages as well as to help holistic therapy clients to make the best lifestyle changes. That said, because kinesiology itself describes the muscle testing that can be used as part of holistic therapy, health kinesiology can become an additional role of the established holistic therapist. To be used in a way of muscle testing for imbalances, added to lifestyle or dietary changes. To understand this better, we can take a look at the following three areas of therapy. Kinesiology or muscle testing to check imbalance can be broken down into three types. These include applied kinesiology, which is used along with massage and realignment. This is the area used by chiropractors and doctors. This involves advanced awareness of the body and education, including physical structure, anatomy, and physiology and biology. Traditional kinesiology is used by sports therapists, exercise coaches, and physiotherapists as a form of muscle testing to assess injury. It is advisable that you are qualified as a sports therapist in order to use kinesiology as part of this process. Specialized or health kinesiology is often used as part of a holistic health and therapy practice. This includes allergy testing or EFT, general emotional care and a broad range of holistic treatments. Classical kinesiology is an adaptation of the applied approach along with all of the exploration carried out by Dr. Goodhart. It has a far more natural approach and also involves the principles of vibrational therapy. The treatments included in the classical approach can include a client bespoke mixture of the following, although the list is not exhaustive acupressure, acupuncture, diet, education, emotional stress treatments, assessment, flower remedies, gentle realignment, herbal natural remedies, manipulation, meridian therapy, natural remedies, nutrition, nutritional therapy, and vibrational therapy. Now let's take a look at applied kinesiology in terms of diagnosis and treatment. Applied kinesiology is presented as a system that evaluates structural, chemical, and mental aspects of health by using a method referred to as muscle response testing or manual muscle testing, MMT, alongside conventional diagnostic methods. The essential premise of applied kinesiology, which is not shared by mainstream medical theory, is that every organ dysfunction is accompanied by a weakness in a specific corresponding muscle in what is termed the viscerosomatic relationship. Treatment modalities relied upon by AK practitioners include joint manipulation and mobilization, myofascial, cranial, and meridial ther meridian therapies, clinical nutrition, and dietary counseling. The specific diagnostic techniques of applied kinesiology are muscle testing, nutrient testing, and therapy localization. Let's take a closer look at muscle testing as the first diagnostic technique of applied kinesiology. A manual muscle test in AK is conducted by having the patient use the target muscle or muscle group to resist while the practitioner applies a force. 
A smooth response is sometimes referred to as a strong muscle. And a response that was not appropriate is sometimes called a weak response. This is not a raw test of strength, but rather a subjective evaluation of tension in the muscle and smoothness of response taken to be indicative of a difference in uh, spindle cell response during contraction. These differences in muscle response are claimed to be indicative of various stresses and imbalances in the body. A weak muscle test is equated to dysfunction and chemical or structural imbalance or mental stress indicative of suboptimal functioning. It may be suboptimal functioning of the tested target muscle or a normally optimally functioning muscle can be used as an indicator muscle for other physiological testing. A commonly known and very basic test is the arm pull down test or the delta test where the patient resists as the practitioner exerts a downward force on an extended arm. Proper positioning is paramount to ensure that the muscle in question is isolated or positioned as the prime mover, minimizing interference from adjacent muscle groups. Nutrient testing is the second diagnostic technique that we will consider. Nutrient testing is used to examine the response of various patient muscles to assorted chemicals. Gustatory and olfactory stimulation are said to alter the outcome of a manual muscle test with previously weak muscles being strengthened by application of the correct nutritional supplement and previously strong muscles being weakened by exposure to harmful or imbalancing substances or allergens. Though its use is pre predicated by the International College of Applied Kinesiology, stimulation to test muscle response to a certain chemical is also done by contact or proximity, for instance, testing while the patient holds a bottle of pills. And the third diagnostic technique we will consider is therapy localization. Therapy localization is another diagnostic technique using manual muscle testing, which is unique to apply kinesiology. The patient or client places a hand which is not being tested on the skin over an area suspected to be in need of therapeutic attention. This fingertip contact may lead to a change in muscle response from strong to weak or vice versa when therapeutic intervention is indicated. If the area touched is not associated with a need for such intervention, the muscle response is unaffected. Now, in terms of the evidence and efficacy of applied kinesiology, a review of several scientific studies of AK specific procedures and diagnostic tests concluded when AK is disentangled from standard orthopedic muscle testing, the few studies evaluated unique AK procedures either refute or cannot support the validity of AK procedures as diagnostic tests. The evidence to date does not support the use of manual muscle testing for the diagnosis of organic disease or pre-subclinical conditions. Another study concluded that there is little or no scientific rationale for these methods. Results are not reproducible when subject to rigorous testing and do not correlate with clinical evidence of allergy. A double blind study was conducted by the ALTA Foundation for Sports Medicine Research in Santa Monica, California, 
and published in the June 1988 Journal of the American Dietetic Association. The study used three experienced AK practitioners and concluded that the results of this study indicated that the use of applied kinesiology to evaluate nutrient status is no more useful than random guessing. Nearly all AK tests are subjective, relying solely on practitioner assessment of muscle response. Specifically, some studies have shown test retest reliability, intertester reliability, and accuracy to have no better than chance correlations. Some skeptics have argued that there is no scientific understanding of the proposed underlying theory of a viscerosomatic relationship, and the efficacy of the modality is unestablished in some cases and doubtful in others. Skeptics have also dismissed AK as quackery, magical thinking, and a misinterpretation of the ideomotor effect. It has also been criticized on theoretical and empirical grounds and characterized as pseudoscience. With only anecdotal accounts claiming to provide positive evidence for the efficacy of the practice, a review of peer-reviewed studies concluded that the evidence to date does not support the use of AK for the diagnosis of organic disease or pre-subclinical conditions. So with the evidence and efficacy of AK in terms of what is published in the literature, why will we consider the use of applied kinesiology in osteokinesthetic practice? Well, during this learning process, we will be focusing on the understanding of applied kinesiology for health, how and why it works within the broader context of holistic practice, along with its place as a touch therapy for natural health. You will not be using applied kinesiology to provide a medical diagnosis. As an osteokinesthetic practitioner, you are expected to apply the broad principles of applied kinesiology so as to provide the very best service to your clients to improve their overall health. Adding to your own knowledge will ensure that you have taken seriously the need to continually develop your skills as a professional. Let's now take a look at energy focus. Everything in the universe is made from energy. Your family, pets are all energy, as is the screen you are reading this on. The cells within the body comprise a nucleus and a lot of space. This space is believed to be energy. It is referred to by physicists as dark energy. Quantum physics is currently on a quest to understand energy. Quantum physics literally means the study of the very small. So, whilst biological science looks at the human body, and mind as cells of matter. Physicists look at the smaller elements. They look at the atoms and even smaller, the quarks that make up all living creatures. Biologically, we are made up of the following systems. The circulatory system, the digestive system, the endocrine system, the muscular system, which is the main focus of kinesiology testing, the nervous system, the reproductive system, the respiratory system, the skeletal system, and the urinary system. Whilst the muscular system is our main focus, all of the systems in the body are tested for breaks in their energy flow. Each of the systems are made of smaller factors, and as we go through smaller and deeper into the body and mind, by way of the root of quantum physics, we cannot escape the fact that energy is at the core. 
The nature of energy is vibration and flow. Kinesiology looks at the flow of energy around the body by using the process of muscle testing. The different types of kinesiology are often looking at the same muscle test in different ways. Muscle testing is a process whereby the energy flow in the body is observed through the reaction of muscles when tested. The muscle that has strong portrays a good flow, whilst a weakness represents a break in the flow. To truly understand the muscle test, it is important to understand the flow itself. In traditional energy medicine, energy is described in many ways. Chinese medicine refers to the energy within the body as qi, whilst traditional Eastern medicine is often shunned by the Western biological approach. Kinesiology brings the two together. Some manual therapists have reported that whenever there is a full moon, therapy tends to be a much more difficult process as clients tend to be stiffer, more difficult to treat, and far more tense. Interestingly enough, how aligned we are within the earth and nature isn't really it. Yet, we often have little idea why we feel a certain way. So when we talk about energy flow, we need to talk about the 12 major meridians. There are 12 major meridians within the body. If the energy flow to or around these is interrupted, then the body will go into a state of imbalance as will the human being as a whole. A kinesiology treatment is referred to as a balance. The 12 major meridians are the bladder meridian, the gallbladder meridian, the heart meridian, the kidney meridian, the large intestine meridian, the liver meridian, the lung meridian, the pericardium meridian, the small intestine meridian, the spleen meridian, the stomach meridian, and the triple warmer meridian. Energy flows from the major meridians to the smaller cells within the body. Certain natural therapy approaches to health use the knowledge about meridians and the flow of energy around the body to guide intervention. So let's talk about recognizing imbalance. As we mentioned earlier, imbalance in the body is detected through muscle testing. Muscle testing is the basis of kinesiology diagnosis, but there are of course many ways and methods which use muscle testing. For instance, health kinesiology uses the muscle test results in a different way to apply kinesiology. The idea behind muscle testing as a whole is to find the areas within the body that are not balanced. A kinesiology session will usually test a lot of different muscles as a form of diagnosis. The muscle is isolated from the others in the group around it by being placed in a specific position. The tester will then push the muscle being tested with about two pounds of pressure. The muscle being tested will then either lock or give way to the pressure. If the muscle gives way, then this is a signification of imbalance. Generally within applied or classic kinesiology, the entire acupuncture system is tested as this tests the meridians and energy flow throughout the body. The acupuncture system works with the same meridians as kinesiology. Applied kinesiology states that 80% of muscle testing results, 80% uh, of muscle testing result, res, results reside in the mind. It is also important to note that muscle testing is not a case of moving the muscle to its full range of motion, as this will defeat the object of the test. The lock is the point that kinesiology focuses most on. 
the art of muscle testing grows as the tester becomes experienced in the practice. The therapist and client must have a level of trust and relaxation for the results to be accurate. It can be easy to meet pressure with pressure, yet to do that during muscle testing will provide an inaccurate result. The entire point of muscle testing is to find energy breakdown in the body. Therefore, both the therapist and client must always keep this in mind. When we become dehydrated, the first thing that changes is the muscles. Therefore, both therapist and client must be hydrated during muscle testing. There are some things that classic kinesiology states must be practiced during muscle tests, and these include the therapist and client must breathe normally, no holding of breath. As the pressure is applied, both should be exhaling. The limb is physically placed in the starting position suitable for the muscle that is being tested. This isolates it from other muscles in the group. There should always be a tiny pause before pressure that allows the brain and muscle to align. As pressure is added, it should be done progressively and not all at once. After a second or two of pressure, the release should be smooth and not jerky. The muscle should not be pressed too firmly, quickly, jerkily, or held for too long. The idea behind muscle testing is that every time a suitable relevant stimulant problem energy breakdown point is present, a muscle will test differently. Muscle monitoring. The history of muscle testing is varied and each kinesiology approach has a slightly different history to their testing. Whilst all muscle testing is the same, people that use different approaches to the body will be reading muscle testing in a different way. Muscle monitoring is something that can be used as part of holistic kinesiology. Testing the muscles, then making the lifestyle changes, then testing the muscles again will give the therapist and client both a blueprint of energy breakdowns along with an idea of progress. Energy healing. Energy healing applies directly to kinesiology, not only because of the meridian flu, but because of our bodies are made up of energy in general. The most fascinating thing about energy is that it cannot be destroyed. It simply changes form. Therefore, the energy you are made up of will always be alive. This doesn't prove that you never die, just that your content, your current uh, energy simply changes form when you do. Quantum theory is absolutely fascinating because it looks at the information above in tiny detail. It's the point where physicists begin to contradict biological treatment. Developed in the early 1970s by Dr. John Tai, Touch for Health is a form of kinesiology and energy healing. Chinese medicine and kinesiology are amalgamated in the Touch for Health approach. Meridians, energy flow, and traditional kinesiology are all added together with traditional Chinese medicine to form this unique approach that is believed to restore balance in the same way as kinesiology. Touch for health is used in many ways, not just physical problems, but also mental and emotional issues. It is used for everything from food allergies to postural rebalance. This type is one that brings the art of Chinese medicine and kinesiology into the 21st century Western world to alleviate the stresses and strains placed on us by lifestyle and environment. Touch for Health can be useful as a natural therapy in the following cases. Addiction treatments, depression, digestion problems, emotional problems, eyesight problems, fatigue, food allergies, pain relief, 
physical injury, muscle realignment, and stress. Chinese medicine is an ancient medicine consisting of a wide range of treatments. Treatment with herbs to restore balance and well-being is part of the traditional approach. Each herbal medicine treatment is prescribed and monitored by a doctor, much like a GP would do with conventional medicine. Along with herbal support, there is also a focus on nutrition, exercise, and specialist massage. Kinesiology is the accompanying type treatment type in touch for health. Despite the practitioner using a holistic approach to the patient or client, in TCM, there are many other approaches that use certain areas of the broad range of Chinese medicine as a standalone treatment or one mixed with talking therapy or touch therapies. Herbal remedies from Chinese medicine have shown great success in improving a variety of conditions. Many of the remedies had been used since ancient times, and as the different healthcare approaches have combined across the seas and over the years, Chinese herbal medicine has become more accessible. As with other herbal remedies, it is important to consult an expert or become an expert in the field yourself when using this approach for healthcare. The positive aspects of exploring and using this medicine type include the use of Chinese herbs along with other medicine types to provide a bespoke care plan. Now let's take a look at the Applied Kinesiology Partners. The following practices may use kinesiology to test and physically realign. Chiropractic, osteopaths, and qualified doctors. The following practices may use kinesiology to test and make gentle changes to the body. Massage therapy, Reiki touch for health, energy healing, acupressure, acupuncture, and energy fluid therapist. And the following practices may use kinesiology to test and make lifestyle changes. Nutritionist, holistic therapist, aromatherapy, but flower practitioner, and energy testing. The following practices may use kinesiology to test for injury and treatment choices. Physiotherapist, sports therapist, and sports scientist. The above roles will give you a general idea of where kinesiology can fit into your practice. They are certainly not exhaustive, though some require more study than others. If you research kinesiology, you will see many different names for it. Holistic therapists often apply their own name to the testing of muscles. Let's take a look at therapy types that can be used alongside muscle testing to give you an idea of additions to your own practice. Acupressure and apply kinesiology. Acupressure works on the meridians of the body by restoring the flow of energy in the areas of breakdown. When energy flow breaks down, we often take painkillers, usually non-steroidal anti-inflammatory painkillers, that can then cause stomach problems. As a holistic therapy type, acupressure removes the energy breakdown and restores helping the pain to stop naturally. It's a really interesting yet plentiful topic to study. If this treatment type resonates with you, then this could be your kinesiology route. Reflexology and Applied Kinesiology Reflexology focuses on the feet. It is believed that there are many reflex points on the feet that naturally affect the well-being of the rest of the body. Kinesiology and reflexology work together by first testing the body for weakness, then using reflex points on the feet, hands, and ears to rebalance the energy flow. The points on the feet, hands, and ears that reflexology places focus on 
are believed to correspond with specific energy flow throughout the body, which includes the organs in the body. The aim is the same as kinesiology to address an imbalance and create a new balance in the body energy flow. Reflexology can be used to relieve the following problems, back problems, breathing problems and breathing disorders, circulatory problems, digestive problems, hormone imbalances, migraine headaches, sinus problems, stress, and overall tension. Reflexology is self-regulated in Bermuda by the Bermuda Natural Health Practitioners Council. Like many professions, self-regulation is becoming a necessity and there are a number of local and international organizations to consider joining after your training is complete. So now let's take a look at the applied kinesiology techniques that we will use in osteokinesthetics. We're going to look at uh, the ATLAS technique. This technique will be used to promote alignment, decrease stress, and promote overall good health. And the second technique is ear unrolling technique. This is used to decrease neck stiffness, increase neck range of motion, decrease stress and tension buildup in the cervical region. The atlas is a well-referenced area of classic kinesiology and one directly associated with stress, in particular the fight and flight response. The atlas, the first vertebra of the spine, along with the axis, the second vertebra of the spine, are together responsible for direct attachment and the wide range of motion of the head. The atlas itself is the first thing believed to suffer when we become stressed. Our shoulders become tight and rise up towards our ears when we are stressed. This is believed to directly affect the atlas. Whilst this is uncomfortable, atlas problems also affect the energy circulation within the whole body. So the first technique, the atlas technique, testing and treating, Within kinesiology, the atlas is tested by having the client in a standing position with their legs at, at hip width apart. The arms will be at the side of the body, palms facing outwards, and the client is then instructed to move and hold one arm parallel to the ground whilst the therapist holds the shoulder and places pressure on the wrist. If the arms test weak, then the client is instructed to put one foot forward and test it again. If it then tests strong, then the atlas may be out of line. If the arm tests strong a second time, this signifies the atlas is probably not misaligned. If the client tests positive for atlas misalignment, then checking for a slight difference in leg length is used to confirm. There are many problems that are associated with a misaligned atlas and some of and some of them are, are listed here such as allergies, cervical pain, chronic fatigue, compressed nerves, uh, digestive problems, dizziness, gastric reflux, stiff neck, tinnitus, shoulder pain, uh, sciatica, leg pain. So as you can see from the chart listed here, the list is pretty exhaustive. Now there is a way to realign the atlas without cracking the neck as chiropractors do, though it is quite easy. So nodding the head up and down 100 times a day will keep the atlas aligned and allow free flow of the nerve fibers between the brain stem and the body. It's as simple as nodding, a nodding agreement in a few 20 nod sessions a day. The atlas will then lose its restriction and perform as it should. Interestingly, the wellness of the atlas is associated with many areas of health inclusive of the synapses of the brain and the trace minerals within the diet. 
Atlas misalignment can be caused by emotional stress, physical stress, neurology, that dehydration, fluctuation in terms of blood sugar levels, poor nutrition, and structural stress. The second technique that we are going to look at is the air unrolling technique, testing and treating. The test consists of turning the head to one side and then towards the other side. So you're going to turn the head from right to and from right to midline and then from midline to left. If stiffness is noted on one side, you're going to apply the simple muscle test on the stiffer side. You're going to treat if the side that appears to be weaker, um, if it goes weak after you apply the test, and you're going to apply the ear unrolling technique by holding the top of the oracle, gently pulling it away from the midline, working your way downwards. And you're going to repeat this two to three more times. Then you're going to turn the head to the right and to the left to see if stiffness has decreased. You're going to test the limb for a return of strength. Now the benefits of ear unrolling include nerve sensations that resonate through the whole body, a feeling of happiness when transmitting positive endorphins, enhance immune system from stimulating the senses, improved skin quality from stimulated skin, and relaxing sensations from the therapeutic touch. So now in terms of putting it all together, in terms of applied kinesiology in osteokinesthetic practice indications, it certainly will be a uh, added benefit to use osteokinesthetic practice and applied kinesiology in the treatment of migraine headaches, sinus headaches, chronic neck pain, chronic neck muscle stiffness or spasms, lymphatic sinus drainage, TMJ disorders, chronic stress, and ptosis, but this is by no means an exhaustive list, much of which you will become uh, very well versed in deciding for yourselves where applied kinesiology can be best applied in your osteokinesthetic practice. The more experience you gain, then the more uh, intuitive your clinical reasoning skills will become for you to know when would be a good time to apply the AK model. Now, in terms of general contraindications for applied kinesiology in osteokinesthetic practice, applied kinesiology contraindications and precautions include when there is an active infection, cellulitis, should not be, it should not be used uh, to, it should not be applied on acute injuries unless it's properly diagnosed. It's not recommended for patients with a fever. It's not recommended over open wound or broken or damaged skin. Care is required during pregnancy. Treatments can be highly beneficial during this time only after consultation with a treating therapist. And again, your approach is going to be very, very gentle. The care required when treating uh, patients with heart conditions as increased lympho will generate additional fluid load on the heart. So this is something to be very careful of. And of course, it's uh, dangerous to use uh, these techniques with deep vein thrombosis or DVT as the thrombus may release by way of the arterial system. Okay, so we have reached the end of lecture number two. And for assignment number two, I'd like for you to answer the following questions. Provide a definition for applied kinesiology. What areas can be partnered with applied kinesiology? What are the diagnostic techniques used to detect imbalance in the body? What is the quantum physics premise of energy? Describe two applied kinesiology techniques used in osteokinesthetics. What are the indications for applied kinesiology in osteokinesthetic practice? And 
under what circumstances is applied kinesiology contraindicated. Now this assignment is due on Sunday 11.55 p.m. on May the 12th. If you have difficulty with this assignment, please send me a text message or shoot me an email. And remember that my office hours are always on Thursdays from 4 to 6 p.m. And with that, I look forward to receiving your assignments and I will see you in the next lecture.